there, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I make videos about a little bit of everything and I'm very happy to finally be making this DIY. It's a series that I've wanted to do for a while and that is to make the Animal Crossing New Horizons DIY recipes in real life. We're gonna start off this series with the mushroom wreath. I thought it would be a cute idea to do that because I just love little wreaths. We're not making it big, I'm gonna make a little version I think that's cuter, but I've made wreaths before in my over the garden wall. Hi, we we'll say hello. We'll say hello. I don't think you guys understand what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, okay. I'll put the photo here to show you my crazy cat. Anyway, like I was saying, I've made wreaths in DIY videos before. I think they're adorable. I made one in my over the garden wall DIY and I believe my Christmas ornaments DIY. She's now playing fetch with me. Cause she does that. We're just gonna keep going. The next DIY that I'm gonna recreate is the macrame from Animal Crossing. But I would love to hear what DIYs that you guys wanna see recreated down in the comments below. So without further ado, let's get into the video. For this DIY, you're gonna need a wreath, little paint brushes, the ends of paint brushes in various sizes, some oven bake clay. I assume you could use air dry as well. You can use these store-bought mushrooms if you don't wanna sculpt your own, acrylic paint, some moss and there's a part that looks like succulents so i thought this would look like that if i cut them up some straw and lastly of course our trusty hot glue gun to start off this project i am using sculpey original oven bake clay and i am just massaging it and i actually add some water to this to make it a bit more malleable and making the mushroom tops definitely took a bit of trial and error what i found worked best was rolling it into a little ball and then using the end of a paintbrush smoothing it down along the edges of the paintbrush i then put some plastic wrap over my paintbrush because i found that the mushroom tops were sticking to it and you can see here you can pop them off a whole lot easier with the plastic wrap on and just repeat this process of rolling out a little ball and putting it on the end of a paintbrush and I'm using different sized paintbrushes depending on what size mushroom top that I want. I'm trying to base it off the in-game photo of the DIY project as best as I can but this is honestly one of my first times working with clay so you're just gonna have to bear with me here. I also added tiny little balls just inside the mushroom top so that the bases would have something to glue onto. Also am making the teeniest little mushrooms here because you'll see in the photo some of them just look like little balls in the in-game photo and I wanted all of them to look like individual tiny mushrooms instead so I made these itty bitty ones with the tiny paintbrushes that I own. Now for the mushrooms that are climbing up the sides of this reef, I made them by putting a ball of clay onto a plastic bag actually, just so that it wouldn't stick to it. And I'm just using the paintbrush as a baby rolling pin and I'm rolling out the edges of that ball, flattening them and peeking it in the center. So that's making the stem. And then when you take them off, I squish together the edges just a little bit so they upturn and make that flat top mushroom look that we're going for. And I do this in various sizes, some big, some smaller, so that I can layer them next to each other. If you recreate this DIY, I would love to see your finished product and even your process. You can share your photos on Instagram by using the hashtag JamiePhotoDIY. Now for the stems, I just take little balls and roll them into random sizing. As you can see, I made a lot of extra mushroom tops because I wasn't sure which ones were gonna be too big, which ones were gonna be too small. And I did the same thing for the stems. I made some short and stubby, some thin and longer. I just randomized it and figured I would glue them and match them all up once they were fully baked. After they're out of the oven and fully cooled, I am basing it off of the in-game photo to decide which stems I put with which mushroom top. You basically want the mushrooms on the left to be a little more pointed and the red mushrooms on the right to be a little more rounded topped. I use hot glue for this whole project. I put a little bit on the stem and then stick it inside the top. 
You can see I start to map out where I want the mushrooms going. The mushrooms on the right will also have a thicker stem and the mushrooms on the left will have skinnier ones. Here's what mine ended up looking like on the inside, and now I'm just going to repeat the process. Again, I'm making extra mushrooms here as well, just in case some are too big or too small. Once you feel like you have all the mushrooms you need, I'm mapping them out so I know which colors to paint them. And throughout the rest of the video, you will see more and more paint get on my hands. So apologies for that in advance, but that is something I am very used to. For painting, I went with a bit of an autumnal color scheme. My strategy here is just to put a base coat on the mushrooms so I know which ones are gonna go where. I also painted some baby ones white and some other little ones brown. Here are the mushrooms that are going to climb up the side of the reef. I painted the tops of those this yellowish beigey color. I'm really bad at describing colors, okay? I apologize. Now I did a second coat over all of my mushroom tops. And then I started to add a bit of dimension to my mushrooms. So I added a slightly lighter shade to the tops of the mushroom where I felt like light would be hitting them. And I added darker colors along the base. And I also added a bit of brown to each mushroom just to kind of show wear and tear of, I don't know, dirt and stuff. On the red mushrooms, I knew I wanted a little bit of white climbing up the side from underneath. So you see me doing that here and I just continue to blend it out to make it look like it's naturally fading into the red. grabbing a tiny paintbrush I'm adding little dots to the top of the red mushroom here I just did this at random I have the too much gene so I was trying to make sure that I didn't go overboard here I discovered using clothespins was very handy for these little mushrooms and it stands them up straight as well, so you don't have to worry about them falling over when they're drying. Now I mentioned the too much gene, so yeah, I kind of do that here. I just kept going back and forth with these mushrooms, adding more light, more dark, ending up with having it look exactly the same that it did before I even started adding more paint. So it's honestly just trust yourself. You know when to stop. You know when it looks good. Yeah, you can see I'm, I basically covered it all up again. And now I'm adding more orange. So this process just kind of continued. So I didn't want to bore you showing all the footage of me doing the exact same thing over and over again. With these guys, I painted darker underneath, and for the top of the mushroom, I'm doing the opposite. I am having the lighter colors be on the edge of the mushroom, and the darker colors in the center. And I'm gonna blend that all together. Here I'm painting the dark brown ones that I mentioned a while back, and these are gonna have little polka dots on top as well. I went back and painted some of the stems of the dried ones. I did white for the red tops and I did a tan for the ones with the orangey tops. Finished product of all the mushrooms, feel free to pause the video if you want a closer look at any of the color combos that I did. Moving on to the reef, I actually painted these because it was bugging me that they weren't dark green. 
Then I just started pulling apart some moss. I laid a little bit where I knew I was gonna have the red ones and I wanted moss to be underneath those nicely. For the placement of the mushrooms, I just kept checking back to the in-game photo of this DIY and I would mess around with it a little bit and then add the hot glue to the ends of the mushroom and put them in place. You can also see here that there are mushrooms that I don't use, maybe I'll use them in another project later on, but I just felt like some of them were too big for this little wreath. So I'm just going to keep going in and adding all the mushrooms and then I'll add moss over to the bases of them to hide that hot glue after I do so. Alrighty, now I put hot glue directly onto the wreath so I can stick some moss into it. And then just where they are in the reference photo, I add these little fake succulent bits. I think it adds just a little bit more texture amongst all the moss. Moving on to the bow, I cut my straw in half because I felt like it was a little too thick. And I cinch the middle of the bow with some hot glue, of course, and wrap a little piece around the center. I made my bow extra long at first because I just wanted to attach it onto my wreath and then I would cut it from there to see what size I wanted it to be exactly. And just like that, you're done. You can add some string to the back if you wanna hang it on a wall. I have mine sitting on my bookshelf though, so I didn't feel the need. this video if you did give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one like i mentioned let me know in the comments what animal crossing new horizons diy you want to see recreated next there are just so many cute wholesome items from this game that i'm like that would be cute that would be cute in a house oh, dropped it you want to say bye well, as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time. Bye.